Hi everyone, a warm welcome to this webinar today. I'm really excited because I have a very special guest. I'm going to interview Per Frykman. Hi Per. Hi Katie, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, likewise. So you and I have known each other for, for many, many years, and I'm shortly going to introduce you more to the audience as well. But So that means I can officially then kick this off. And the topic today is about why your professional reputation matters more than ever. And also as an executive or board member, how you can remain top of mind by considering the components and the um, impact of your professional reputation. And my name is Katie Karuan. And I'm the CEO of Digotion, and where we help uh, leaders and organizations manage and survive in the digital age. And today, as mentioned, I have my very special guest here, Per Frykman, who not only is a friend, but also a long-term uh, uh, partner in business in terms of his uh, own services and methods. So today, before I um, start interviewing Per more in detail. I just want to share what we're going to cover so you can follow easily. And the first point is, and, and Pat actually added this to the agenda because I totally forgot, <laughs> uh, but of course it's really important that we can share uh, with you why reputation is so important today. And, and Pat will also share the key trends that he is seeing that can add to your existing um, perception of, of this phenomenon. And then we want to be really concrete so you can actually learn and get some insights about what you can do already today to make sure that you don't miss out on opportunities in this area. We're also going to share a few examples of people who already did this and uh, who have worked with PAD in the past. And also at the end, we're coming back to something that is very exciting and I'm not going to expose too much about that right now, but there will be a new book coming this autumn and Pad is one of the authors of that book. So just to get started with introducing Pad Frykman more to you, he is a very experienced author and uh, um, I would say pioneer in the area of reputation management. He has written several books on topics like recruitment, personal branding, and lately about the professional reputation. And also he has his own uh, unique method that he developed with his business partner, Cardin Sandin, in terms of actually analyzing the professional reputation and then recommending what you can do about that um, when you have the insight about what it is like. So, Pat, why don't you just um, add to my introduction of you if, in case I missed something that is important for the listeners to understand? Well, I think that's what covers most of it. It's, I've been in the area of reputation for about 10 years, and it's been a really exciting journey of exploration. So it's, um, and it continues with new aspects and new insights. Yes, and we've known each other for five years, even six years, if I recall correctly. And uh, um, w one thing that I, I've learned about you and the people whom you work with is that you always stay, uh, you know, um, cutting edge. You always uh, grasp what is new, and you translate into that. Uh, you translate that into our own daily lives in a very intriguing way. So. We, we look forward to, um, to taking part of your experiences here today. So why don't you just start off by, by giving the rationale behind why the reputation is so important, especially today? Yes, but let's first consider, I mean, why is, what is reputation? And um, it's actually very simple. It's how your actions and uh, unique qualities are perceived by your professional surroundings. And that's what differs it from personal branding. So it's not what you say about yourself and uh, it's how you are perceived. And the reason why this is so important today is that your reputation sets the expectations of what you can accomplish and how you will go about it. And this actually runs your business and your career. And I can't think of anything more important than that. And um, I would say that I find no other single strategy with the same impact 
on the economy as working with reputation, both for you and for your company. Uh, Warren Buffy who is a famous business leader in the United States. Uh, once said that we can afford to lose money. We can afford to lose a lot of money, but we can't afford to lose a shred of our reputation. And of course, that goes for both you and for the company. Hmm. And, and as you mentioned that, Parad, if you may um, uh, just allow a question upon that, uh, I know that you have been looking into some research uh, performed in the, U in the US about exactly what is important in terms of, of uh, this expectation management of your reputation? Yes, there is some interesting research from Weber and Shandwick, uh, which says that up to 60% of a company's market value is tied to its reputation, and half of that, 30%, is tied to the reputation of the top executives. Mm -hmm. And um, I also saw that 90% of investors base their decisions on the reputation of the top executives and, of course, the expectations that, that follows with that, that reputation. And what's really interesting is also that the reputation of top executives is, is very vital to <clears throat> attracting the, the, the crucial talents that we need. So, so badly today. And I think that's a point that's not been discussed so much in employer branding discussions. Mm. But what really surprises me is that, that everyone that I meet agree upon how crucial their reputation is for their success. But very, very few are aware of what their own reputation looks like or the opportunities that it opens up. Yeah, and, and as you mentioned, uh, one of the things that really makes your method and analysis uh, quite unique is the fact that you focus on the individual leaders and his or her uh, reputation. <clears throat> so can you share a little bit more about which components do you look at in determining how he or she is perceived in the market? Well, it's, it's both the hard skills and the, the soft skills because I mean, your expertise as a leader is, is crucial, but you need something to transform it into action with a successful result. And that's where all your soft skills come in, your unique qualities. And that is something that we are not really aware of or can introduce in a trustworthy way. So when we look at the person's reputation, we look at your expertise, your experience, and above all, your unique qualities. Mm. And I'm thinking also, as you said, that the soft skills mm. and maybe the uh, the challenge in, in making that visible or measurable in some ways, and because it's quite intangible, and, and your method and tool actually allow, um, allow leaders to understand uh, directly how they are perceived in a very concise way. Yes, and, and <clears throat> that is crucial because if you want to improve upon your leadership skills, you must really know what they looks like. And that's the, the, the problem today that so few are aware of the, the soft skills and mm. how they are perceived. Mm. Fascinating. Um, I am conscious about time here. We could talk about this probably for an hour alone. <laughs> but uh, why don't we move on here to some of the key trends that you see when monitoring the, uh, the, the key trendsetters uh, and um, what do you make out of them? How can we interpret that and then use that as leaders in, in the daily uh, life? Yes, Katie, when we discussed that, I picked out four main trends that, that I see. And uh, the first is that trust has moved from the company to the individual, which makes individual reputation a, a dominant factor. I mean, I don't trust my bank. I don't trust my insurance company. What I trust is the individual within those, uh, those companies. 
And this makes every, every top executive, every board member, every key employer a reputation weapon. And I think you have to consider that and the value of it. So uh, that's one thing that's really, really crucial today. And if I just might add to that, when we meet and discuss with executives and board members, we very often then come across this, this perception that uh, it's difficult or more challenging or even kind of um, uh, uncomfortable to uh, see yourself as an individual with a professional reputation beyond the company organizational brand and the company reputation. So this is, this is something that many leaders are struggling with today in terms of how they want to position themselves and what they feel is, is okay and, uh, and helpful to, to promote business and attract the right opportunities. That's, that's true. And, and uh, you have to make a complete approach to, to reputation, both the company reputation and the reputation of the top executives and key employees. And um, the second trend I came to think of is that World Economic Forum in, in Davos uh, labeled reputation risk as the number one risk factor today. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we see crisis after crisis emerging and how crisis consultants are called in to, to handle the situation. But I think there's a simpler way that if you focus on your reputation, you will keep focusing on how you act. And I think that can prevent many, many crises and save a lot of money to the company. Mm. And uh, then the third trend that I picked out is the reputation in the digital transformation. And I mean, both you and me hear the discussions going on if top executives should be on social media. And I can only refer to Richard Branson who said that, well, to me, the answer is simple. I want to be where my customers are. And, and uh, that's, I think, a, a profound answer, answer today because you have to be in, on social media. And, and if I just may add to that, also when, when we, share our experiences with others, we see that still a very high number of executives and board members feel that it's a waste of time to use social media and they are not even using it for listening purposes to understand what is going on and what are the customers or potential customers or partners or other stakeholders actually doing and talking about. So I, I think this is a really, really important point and fits really well with what we do as well. Yeah, and if you consider the, the, the figure that I mentioned, that 60% of a company's market value is tied to its reputation and half of that to the top executives, you will understand how crucial this is. Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, reputation management is huge business in many countries, but that only deals with how you are perceived online. And I think that a more effective strategy is to consider reputation offline, how you are perceived offline. And from that aspect, build a strategy to put it online, because however much you are online, you will meet your clients, customers and employees offline. So I think that's a crucial way to, to go about your reputation online and offline. Absolutely, and, and if I may add as well that Sometimes we see that people put a lot of effort into their online uh, presentations and, and so on, and it doesn't really match up when you meet them in person. So it's all a matter of, of making it trustworthy and, and being able to recognize the person who you're meeting. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's a good blend of, of both, and um, we can certainly um, um, testify to that as well. The same as we, I mean, I love LinkedIn. And I listened to a very interesting discussion between Chris Brogan and John Nemo, who is a LinkedIn expert. And what they were talking about is transforming your LinkedIn profile from just a resume site to a reputation site. Mm -hmm. 
uh, because I mean nobody cares what what you have done in the past. They will care how you can add value. And I think that should also be but that's crucial on your LinkedIn profile to show how you can add value to your clients and customers. Yeah, and, and again, I mean, uh, so many people and leaders are still hesitant to using LinkedIn beyond the traditional resume uh, approach instead of, of seeing it as a platform to, to build and, and maintain your reputation over time. And it doesn't matter if you need a new job or a new assignment right now, but you have so much to gain from being active and, and making footprints on, on LinkedIn in building your reputation even in your current job or your current assignments. So again, a very, very interesting trend of yours. Thanks for sharing that. And then the, the fourth trend that, that I picked out is uh, the gig economy. I mean, the, the, the freelance economy, which builds on reputation and building trust. And we, we see the trend today that so many people by choice or choose to be freelancers or giggers, mm -hmm. and uh, it's estimated that more than 50% in the States will be freelancing in maybe three to five years. And how can that be crucial to a leader? Well, the thing is that people who by choice are giggers are probably the best, the attractive talents. And uh, how can we as leaders attract people who don't want a job? And that will be a crucial question in your hunt for the best talents in the future. Yeah, and, and uh, again, that's a really fascinating trend. And it, it will spread, as you say, to, to many more countries beyond the US. And, and um, the, the key thing here, I think, for executives and board members to consider is the fact that a very important part of your workforce in the future will be outside of your organization, but you need to still orchestrate it and to attract it to make it. Uh, all jive together in the way you're serving your customers. Uh, so uh, without saying too much right now, I know we will talk more about the gig economy to the end of this uh, interview when you are presenting your new book, okay? Okay, yes. <laughs> Wonderful. That's really brilliant, uh, Tara. Thank you so much for sharing the key trends that you see. And I'm sure that it, they add a lot of value to uh, what the listeners already have picked up from, from other sources. So if we move on now to see, okay, so what can I do as a leader, as an executive, as a board member, what can I do concretely then to make sure that I'm thought of, that I'm top of mind in terms of the next top job or the next board assignment? Well, the first thing or the, my line of business is to really explore and expand, expand. Uh, an individual's reputation. But if you don't go into that process, there are three things that I think is crucial. And the first is, is to really focus on your unique qualities as your main development areas instead of weaknesses. Uh, I used to say that I've never met anyone yet who became successful on their weaknesses become successful on, on our strengths. But I see how many, many leadership programs are, are focusing on the weaknesses of the leadership instead of focusing on the things that are already working. And besides, it's, it, it's much more fun mm -hmm. to focus on your unique qualities and develop them. And uh, the second thing that I think it's really crucial is to have a mind shift that takes you from focusing on past history to what you can accomplish. Uh, when I meet people and I, they have no problem telling me what they have done in the past, but when I ask them about what can we expect from me in, in the future, I notice a great a big hesitation. They, they don't. They can't pin, pinpoint it. And there are some really interesting research from uh, Harvard Business School and Stanford University that shows that potential is much more interesting than your history. 
So I think we can get rid of the, the expression that you are never better than your last project because you are actually never better than your next project, mm -hmm. which sometimes is a great relief, actually. And if I might just comment on that mindset shift, I think it's a um, very fascinating thought. And it's, it's really good not to see that there's research backing this up. Um, because as you say, we struggle, many of us struggle in order to share what we haven't done yet in our professional lives. And can we become better at that? We can, be, we can excite more people, we can inspire them. And, and uh, that will create and attract probably a lot of opportunities. So uh, I, I, I'm really a big fan of, of that perspective of yours. And uh, the third thing is something that is really effective and, and something I, I really love. And it's my stop doing list. Um, I, Seth Godin once wrote that it's a myth that winners never quit. Uh, winners quit all the time, but the thing is that they quit the right things at the right time. So it, it's time to focus on the right things and get rid of the wrong things. So running and stop doing this will make all the difference in the world. And if I just may add to that as well, you know, in, in working with digital transformation challenges and when we, when we support companies and organizations in doing so, uh, we very often come across this phenomena of, of safeguarding their, their babies and it's really difficult to, uh, to uh, consider them some cost and, and move on to something else. And this experimental approach to, to driving business um, is, is uh, increasingly coming, but still we see that there's a lot of protection around things that have been done for, for many, many years and things that they know uh, is working in today, today's environment that might not work tomorrow. So I think that's applicable as well, in, even into that uh, digital transformation scene. Yes, and, and um, the thing is that I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you if I hadn't run my stop doing list because it pushes you to the area where your passion and Unique qualities join forces to to achieve great things, and you constantly get rid of things that are boring or clients that you don't want to work with anymore, and so on. Mm. But it's crucial to remember that when you make that decision to stop doing something, uh, you have to get rid of it over time. It, it could take months to get get rid of them, but once the decision is made. Uh, something happens in your subconscious minds that drives you to that to the place where you, where you should really be. It was a mental face out period then. Definitely. <laughs> okay, that's really good stuff. And I, I think that this will be really helpful and useful tips uh, for our listeners as well. Uh, so thank you so much for sharing those, uh, those hints, Pat. I, I quickly then want to move on to some examples because I, I asked you before this interview whether you could show some examples of people who have been working with you in the past in understanding more about their professional reputation and uh, maybe they're in a different type of, of um, ro job role, maybe then different parts of the world. And you came up with two very intriguing examples. So. Maybe you would like to introduce them yourself. And here's the first one from Sweden. Well, Paul is, is the chairman of a, a consultancy and has been around as a consultant for, for many years. And he approached me to, to have his, his reputation explored. And I actually did it twice with four or five years be between the, the explorations. And it's fascinating how unaware he was of his unique qualities. And what's also fascinating is that how hard we had to accept our unique qualities and strengths. And uh, he wrote in an email that, that it was, or I think he wrote on, on, on LinkedIn, that it was like to put on a pair of newly washed jeans. 
that was really tight and uncomfortable. And it took about a week to, to get used to them. And he compared that to getting used to his strengths. And he also said, which was really great, he said that it really transformed my whole professional life. And one example was that he said that uh, after that, he, he never tried to convince, be convincing at meetings and never convinced so much as he did after he knew his strengths. Wow, that's a very uh, fascinating quote. And, and what I was really happy about uh, is the quotation that, that he, he wrote on, on, on the picture saying that all of these years after Tom Peters coined the term brand new, you are the first to have found a way to make it real. Mm. And um, of course, that makes me really, really proud. Yeah, excellent. And um, I, I think it's so uh, cool to use a word. <laughs> it's really cool to see that a person who has been around for so many years with that kind of experience still can can, can find something that adds tremendously to, to his professional life. So I, I think that's why this is a very, very interesting example. So thank you for sharing that uh, from, uh, from Paul. Then moving on to another part of the world, uh, this is slightly different, but still really fascinating. So why don't you introduce uh, the next one as well? Well, this is Nilton Röder, who is um, uh, from, from Brazil. And um, he came into a situation where he had to look for a new, a new leadership role and um, <clears throat> had his reputation explored. He worked over, over Skype for, for a couple of months. And also very fascinating how unaware he was of his leadership skills. Uh, the only thing he produced was an old, very let's say boring resume. And, and uh, we made this exploration. And I remember that when he got the report about his reputation and his, his uh, skills, he took the report and the papers, or ran down to his colleagues, spread the papers out on the table and says, is this really me? And his colleague said, yes, Milton, this is really you. And then he used this material to, to look for new leadership and leadership jobs. And he landed two top positions. Uh, one in, in actually in Sweden, in Gothenburg at Volvo. And then he landed another one and is now head of vehicle sales and business development in Volvo in Latin America. And um, I have contact with him now and then, and, and he's really, really thrilled about knowing his his, um, his skills and his, well, his leadership skills. Mm. And he, he was quite unaware of them. Yeah, and, and I think that's a really a fascinating point there, that the many leaders, uh, in, including myself, you know, before I did this myself, uh, many leaders are really unaware of how they're perceived. They might have a suspicion or a hope or <laughs> an ambition, uh, but they don't really know. And to some people, it's, it's almost like a, um, a blank spot, right? So you're kind of curious, but it kind of, it's kind of uh, exciting, but also a bit frightening to, to explore that. So can you share some things uh, that you see often from this process when working with people? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's a bit strange, actually, that we are so unfamiliar or can't accept our strengths because it's on them that we are hired. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not hired upon our past history. We are hired upon what we can accomplish in the future. We are hired upon our reputation. We are hired upon our strengths. So I think it's, it's crucial to be aware of them and act and accept them and promote them in a trustworthy way. Mm. Yeah, well, very, very intriguing. And I, I hope the viewers and listeners uh, have made some notes here and uh, 
maybe there will be an insight or a reflection uh, that will be helpful uh, after this one. So let's move on then to your next project because we always want to talk about the next upcoming things. And you are writing a new book with a business partner of yours, Christina Narman. And uh, I'm so excited to learn more about, if you can share with the uh, listeners and viewers today, what is this book all about and why it's important that we, uh, what, that we uh, learn more about it? Well, it's actually our first book in, in English, which is really exciting. And, <laughs> <laughs> and the title of the book will be, If You Dig It, Gig It. And uh, of course, it will be about all the new possibilities that we see in this gig economy where your break time, a breakthrough of a lifetime can come from anywhere in the world. And um, so, so um, it will be about 120 ideas about this gig economy. It will not be a how to do book, but mainly those 120 ideas that hopefully can change your professional life. Well, 120 ideas, that means one every third day or so of the year. So <laughs> when do we expect the book approximately? In the uh, end of September. Okay, so brilliant. So will there be a big virtual launch party or do you want to reveal anything about that? Well, uh, we think we'll have, we will have a launch party in, in Stockholm and we're considering also having a launch party in Silicon Valley. Okay. Brilliant. So um, I might join you in one of those uh, <laughs> locations. We'll see where. Uh, but the best of luck to, to you and Christina in, in completing the book and getting it um, up in the shops and onto the net. Thank you. Well, then, this means that we have come to the end of this. And um, normally we pick up questions as we go along. I received one question before this call. So I wanted just to mention that briefly and and that if you just will spend a short minute in describing uh, how long does it normally take uh, to go through the process of analyzing the professional reputation well, the, the process of the exploring it or analyzing it takes about two weeks because you send out a questionnaire to to 15 people in the professional surroundings, seven open descriptive questions. And uh, to get those answers back takes about a week. And then I need around another week to, to uh, examine it, put it together and see what are the crucial parts of the reputation. And then you, uh, people can choose to, to work with me for another three months for, for and, and for getting advices on how to use it, in, 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 depending on what they want to accomplish. Right. Okay. So between two weeks up to three months, uh, approximately, if you want to go the full mile then. Yes. All right. Thank you so much for sharing that, Pat. And I have to say, at the Goshen, we're really happy to have you as one of our preferred partners in terms of uh, uh, in the unique methods and, and tools that we offer our customers as well. Thank you, Katie. And uh, for those of you watching or listening, uh, I just want to remind you that in case you are interested in taking part in more research and trends and inspiring interviews and hints and tips on various digital uh, topics and related topics such as professional reputation management, you're welcome to uh, join us at our free of charge inside platform and the link is here. And also um, in, by thanking you for joining today, I also want to remind you that we are really interested in learning more about which topics you think we should focus on moving forward. So we have a plan, a schedule of different topics, but we're always listening to uh, requests from our followers. So please feel free to suggest new topics. And we intend to uh, run these webinars on a weekly basis during the summer, and then we'll move over to a bi-weekly basis after summer to stay in touch. So with that, I want to thank you, Pat, for joining us today. It was really, really inspiring. 
Thank you, Kathy. And uh, to the rest of you, I hope to see you soon in a webinar or on our website, thegotion.com. Bye.